Hello everybody, thanks for checking out my video about the endomycorrhizal network. It's a really important system that you find all over the plant kingdom. All diagrams are drawn by me and written by me, but the information certainly wasn't mine. You'll get citations down in the information bar. This video is sort of mm, unintuitive. <laughs> it's just a bunch of pictures lined up together. So what I say is more important than what you're looking at. And I hope you have enough interest in the uh, subject matter that this won't be so unappealing to you. This video is meant to be sort of a quick and simple explanation of the different attributes and aspects of the endomycorrhizal system. There's the ectomycorrhizal system, which is similar but different. Here we are talking about only the endomycorrhizal system. So first things first. Some of the most important things that I'm going to outline here in this video that you should know if you want to know anything about the endomycorrhizal system is that 85% of plant families have an arbuscular mycorrhizal relationship and that's a really big deal because there's a pretty big theory out there that states that um, the fungal kingdom on land uh, predates the plant kingdom on land and in fact it is the fungal kingdom that made it hospitable for plants to become land-based. The phylum glomeromycota encompasses all arbuscular forming species of mycorrhiza. This relationship is a mutualistic one. The plant gets a lot out of it and the fungus gets a lot out of it and together they benefit each other. What are the benefits? Well, the plant benefit is the uptake of nutrients, especially phosphorus and nitrogen in the form of nitrate and ammonium. And the fungal benefit is the uptake of carbon in the form of hexose. So this relationship is very beneficial for both the plant and the fungus. In particular, the fungus, because many fungi who are in this relationship can't live without the benefit of the plant, which supplies the carbon in the form of hexose. I know it's a little bit difficult to see these pictures and these diagrams that I've drawn. I'm a little bit proud of them, but they probably don't make the best learning material. I apologize for that. In any event, endomycorrhizal relationships come in two forms for the most part. Paris type and arum type. Paris type moves from one cell to the next and arum type moves between cells. No matter which way they turn, these endomycorrhizal relationships are centered around the arbuscules. Now these arbuscules are compartments where the trading happens. This is where the phloem and the sucrose that turns into hexose goes to the fungus, while the fungus trades for the nitrogen and the phosphorus, the inorganic phosphorus. I mentioned before that the fungus invaginates the cell wall but it does not invaginate the protoplasm. So what happens? Well, the arbuscules are these small sort of globular organs that are the sites for these chemical exchanges. And there are two types of mycelia that are important in this relationship. There's the intraradical mycelia which are the site of the nutrient transfer, and the extra radical mycelia, which are the site of the nutrient acquisition. So the arbuscles are going to be intraradical, and the hyphae is going to be the extra radical mycelium. Now you might be thinking, hey, uh, Matt, you said this was going to be 
quick and dirty and simplified. And believe it or not, it is. So let me explain to you this super important process really quickly. As you can see from the picture, hexose is going to go into the arbuscule and inorganic phosphorus is going to come out of the arbuscule. The hexose that's coming in is going to be processed and it's going to become tra uh, trehalose and glycogen. You might have heard of glycogen before. It's sort of a supplement that some people get if they have arthritis. Now this is super important because this is the whole reason why the relationship exists. The fungus requires the carbon that is in this hexose sugar, which was formerly sucrose, and the phosphorus, which is a pretty big limiting factor in plants, is being super accumulated because this fungus is so much better at managing and finding this uh, nutrient. Same with the nitrogen. Um, these are two really important factors and nutrients for plants and the hyphae are incredibly well designed for uptake of these nutrients. As you can see from the video, the hyphae are longer and have a better surface to area ratio for nutrient uptake. And it's true, if you ever discovered um, uh, mycorrhizal roots, I mean, rhize means root, and uh, a lot of the times the mycorrhizal relationship basically supplements the root system of a plant and acts like a root system in and of itself. From an agricultural or horticultural point of view, you might be wondering, well, okay, this relationship is really important for the plants and it will really benefit my plants growing and probably give it more nutrients, which makes it more healthy, which makes it more healthy for me to eat, and perhaps it will make it quicker to harvest. And these are all true, but from a ecological point of view, um, what's going on? What are some of the other benefits? Well, you might find that commercial fertilizer that has mycorrhiza in it will have ecto and endo mycorrhiza and you might be wondering why that is well I'll make another video about ecto mycorrhiza and ecto mycorrhiza is found less often in plant families it is found primarily with trees although not always and they make the mushrooms. Um, endomycorrhiza doesn't always make mushrooms. They usually don't make mushrooms, but a lot of ectomycorrhiza do. Some of them are poisonous. Some of them are a delicacy, like truffles. In any event, they try to hedge their bets by giving you a large canister of a hodgepodge of species from both phyla of ecto and endomycorrhiza and this is so that you can use it and if the endomycorrhiza don't find a host no big deal some of the species will be better suited to certain plants and some of the species will be suited not to those plants and so they might find hosts somewhere else they might live a less productive life maybe they won't be dependent on the host or they might just die off and the more species you have, the better chance this won't happen. Additionally, some species just work really well together. We don't know why in some cases, but demonstrably, in experiments, when you put these two species together, they complement each other or something, and they grow or they give rise to a better growth rather in the plants than they would um, separately. And sometimes this is an evident reason, like one of them has a weakness and the other one has a strength and they can complement each other. Or it's not evident, but it works and we're not quite sure why. Sometimes 
that's just the best answer that we have. I wanted to put the most um, applicative information in the beginning and the less applicative, more theoretical information at the end so that people who want to know how to use the mycorrhiza or how it works can see it in the first couple of minutes and people who are interested in the whole thing can save for the whole thing. Uh, I understand that watching a video that's really long with only a few pictures is probably not the most appropriate use of your time and perhaps a little bit boring. I apologize for that. But at the very end, I want to put all the key points that I've gathered and remind you that I have cited sources. And if you're interested in these sources, I have them for you. And they should be in the information bar below. So without further ado, here are my key points to summate this video. So there are five main calcifications of endomycorrhiza, arbuscular, aracoid, arbitoid, monotropoid, and orchid mycorrhiza. I mentioned that 85% of plant families have an arbuscular mycorrhizal relationship. Glomeromycota encompasses all arbuscular forming species of mycorrhiza, and the mycorrhiza that I talked in particular about are arbuscular forming. Arbuscular mycorrhiza penetrate the parenchyma cortex and invaginate only the cell membrane but not the protoplasm. Intraradical and extraradical mycelia are the two most important kinds. Intraradical mycelia are the site of nutrient transfer. Extraradical mycelia are the site of nutrient acquisition. So Intraradical is when the trading between nutrients happens. Extraradical is where the fungus goes out and acquires said nutrients. The two main types of penetration is paris and arum, and they're dependent on the plant host. Sometimes a plant host will have both. Sometimes a fungus will only make one or the other. It just depends. Paris type moves from one cell to the next, while arum type will move in between the cells. Plant benefit for the fungus is hexose, which is modified sugar. Um, sucrose, you might be familiar with from the phloem of the plant. And the plant benefit is the uptake of nutrients from the soil, primarily inorganic phosphorus and nitrogen in the form of ammonium and nitrate. I admit, I was not expecting to make a 13 plus minute video with only four pictures and me rambling on about, well, shrooms and fungus in general. But if you enjoyed this video and you found it informative, I appreciate it. That's what I do these for. And if you have any questions, please comment and please ask any question you want. Perhaps I'll know the answer, perhaps not. Perhaps I'll be able to find a way to give you that answer or find it somewhere else on the internet. You know, Google is a thing. In any event, um, I'm probably going to redo this series. I say that about a lot of series, but in particular this one because it's really not very um, attractive. But it does have the information there, which is the important part. So like a textbook, it is dry, but... It is informative. Thanks for watching. See you next time.